Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. This time around, let's do a quick video covering field techniques for better shadow recovery once you get back home. Have you ever been processing a raw file and noticed that the shadows were just a little too dark? So what do you do? You grab the shadow slider, you bring up those darker areas, and you zoom in to check them. Then you instantly notice that the shadow areas, while they're certainly lighter, kind of look like crayons scribbled on 10 grit sandpaper. What's frustrating is that maybe your ISO was 1600 or so, and you know the rest of the image looks great. So what's happening here? Why are the shadows not holding up? Well, to answer that question, we need to talk about the way ISO works for a moment. First, ISO doesn't make your sensor any more sensitive to light, so just forget about that. Well, we do sort of use it as a sensitivity adjustment, it's actually signal amplification, and that signal is light. In the majority of the cameras, the camera only has one sensitivity, and that's base ISO. This means you're still capturing the exact same amount of light for a given f-stop and shutter speed combination, no matter how high you crank up that ISO dial. In short, if the shutter speed and f-stop combination we're using creates an image that's too dark at base ISO, we turn to ISO amplification so that we can get a proper level of brightness. In short, ISO works a little bit like a volume knob for brightness. Now, technically, it's a gain adjustment, but volume is easier for most people to kind of visualize there. So let's do an example. Imagine you're at the edge of town jamming to an old journey song and the signal starts to fade. If you turn up the volume, the signal doesn't get stronger, does it? You only amplify what's already there. And as you make the music louder, the static, the noise goes up right along with it. However, what happens if you install a more powerful antenna on your car? That's right, you can collect more of the signal and you get music with less static. And that's what happens when we use slower shutter speeds or wider f-stops instead of boosting ISO. So what the heck does all of this have to do with shadow noise, right? Simple, as you bring up the shadow or even the exposure brightness in your post-processing software, you're performing a digital version of what the camera does with the ISO setting. This means that the effect of local ISO values in those pulled shadow areas will increase as you raise them. So if you shot at ISO 1600 and then bring the shadows up by two stops, those shadows will look as if they were shot, those individual areas, at ISO 6400. Also, keep in mind that some cameras respond better to shadow pulls than others. While most cameras are ISO invariant to some degree, there are still sensors out there, like what we find in the D5 and the Nikon D6, for example, that are not. In those cases, pulling the shadows may be actually somewhat worse than other cameras. In addition, remember that darker tonalities reflect back less light. In my experience, it seems like I typically get better shadow recovery from mid-tone and light tonalities than I do if I'm trying to pull shadows on like a black bear or something. So what can you do in the field so you can get good results back home when it's time to adjust those shadows? First, you have to start evaluating shadows when you shoot and deciding if you're going to need to pull them up when you get back home. Now, if the light isn't too harsh, you know, they may not need any help or only maybe a little tiny nudge, and you really don't have to worry about that kind of situation at all. However, if they are deep and dark, they may require a harder push on that shadow slider, and in turn, your noise is going to be much worse in your shadow areas. Also, be careful shooting fully backlit shots with harsh light or with bright light right behind your subject. Those often need a far harder shadow push than you might think, like three, four, even five stops sometimes, and it's best to avoid them if possible. I typically only do fully backlit shots in easier light, like bright overcast or 20 minutes before sunset or after sunrise. If you're forced to shoot in hard backlit light, it's sometimes better just to expose for the subject and let that background go and try to do something more creative with it. Second, what's your ISO? If you're shooting an image that's going to require a tough shadow pull in post, keep the ISO as low as you can in the field by either opening up the lens more or dropping the shutter speed. The better the signal to noise ratio, basically the more light you're feeding the sensor and the less ISO you need for a proper brightness level, the better your shadows will respond when you try to pull them up. After all, if you're shooting ISO 200, a two-stop shadow pull only puts those shadow areas at about ISO 800. Okay, so I was putting the video together and another thought occurred to me that I want to share with you and it's about my favorite aspect of photography to beat up on and that is cropping. So let's talk about how that relates to shadow recovery. So here's the thing, if you're cropping your image, it's probably because the subject's a little smaller than you'd like, right? Now the smaller the subject is in the frame, the smaller the detail is on that subject in the frame, right? That makes sense. So here's the thing, as you pull up shadows, as you know, we get a little bit more noise in those areas, right? Now here's the problem. 
if you've cropped heavily and you try to pull up shadows, you might get into a situation where the noise very easily overwhelms that detail in those shadow areas where it would not have had you been able to fill the frame properly. So that's one more thing to consider if you're out in the field and you know you're going to have to do some shadow pulling. Third, if your ISO is on the low side, say under 400 or 800 depending on the camera, make sure you're capturing in 14-bit. The shadows are going to hold up better than they will at 12-bit. At higher ISOs, bit depth doesn't make a significant difference in most cameras, so you don't really have to worry about that. But for lower ISOs, it can definitely help. Fourth, consider repositioning yourself if it's possible. If you can shoot with a light at your back or from a position that reduces or maybe even eliminates the shadows, you won't have to worry about them at all. So for a wildlife photo, maybe you try to approach and position yourself for a front lit shot instead of a side light or backlight shot with really, really heavy shadows. This is especially important if your ISO is already pretty high. Finally, you can also use things like fill flash, reflectors, or naturally reflective surfaces to help fill in the shadows for some types of images. In fact, one of the reasons I love shooting birds along the beach is that the sand acts as a natural reflector and helps keep those shadow areas under their wings under control. By the way, if you're a Nikon shooter, check out my ebook, Exposure and Metering for Nikon. It covers everything you'd ever want to know about every exposure and metering option on your Nikon, as well as giving you tons of examples and insights, just like what you've seen in this video. Finally, make sure you sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, a live stream, a workshop, an article, new book, you name it. Also, if you have a photography question or just want a fun place to show off your photos, check out the BCG forums. I can't wait to see you over there. Finally, make sure you like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.